BYU making changes on the coaching staff because yeah. I think this has been a very passionate discussion over the last two days um, about what changes are coming to the staff. I think we already all agree. Um, you know, we know that Eli Satuiaki is out because he resigned. I think we have heard very strong indications that Preston Hadley and Ed Lamb are out um, on the defensive side of the football. Uh, I have been told directly that significant changes are going to be made to the strength and conditioning program at BYU for football. Does that mean that the entire strength and conditioning staff are out? I am not willing to say that at this point. Do you even lift? The bigger question becomes Harvey Yunga. Um, and we saw a bunch of BYU fans last night and everybody was asking us, hey, is Harvey Yunga in? Is Harvey Yunga out? I have not been told one time that Harvey Yunga is out. I will just plainly put that out there. Could be wrong. I don't know. I have not heard that Harvey Yunga is out. Right. I have heard that A-Rod is fine, that they are not going to make significant changes to the offensive staff. I have been told that the staff will largely be left in place and that they feel like, and I asked specifically about Harvey Yunga because I've heard so much about him. Harvey Yunga tends to run a little hot. Harvey's a passionate guy. But without question, the running backs have not been the issue at BYU. Running back recruiting has been an issue at BYU. Running back talent development has not been an issue at BYU. And whether that's Tyler Algier, whether that is Christopher Brooks, who I think was serviceable, I think he was solid, I think he was not spectacular, but I think the running backs have not been the issue at BYU. Mm -hmm. I think certainly Fessy has done a really good job with the wide receivers. I just don't see a need for a significant change. The offensive line has been rock solid. I think you're looking at an issue on defense and an issue with strength and conditioning. And we've talked about this for months now. And we've talked about strength and conditioning so much on this show because we've heard complaints from players about strength and conditioning. We've heard about, you know, squats and back squats and heavy lifting for wide receivers. And it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Guys have told us specifically, hey, I'm a defensive back. I want specific training for my position. We've heard that. What do you bench? Linemen and, and skill players should not be training the same way in the weight room. Nah. And while they don't train the exact same way, they also don't get position-specific training. And a lot of guys are doing self-development, which is never the right way to go about it in, in big-time college football. So I think you're going to see significant changes in the strength and conditioning program at BYU. But I also think the conversation needs to be had and it needs to be said. Change for the sake of change is not change at all. And you can't go too far. And one of the things that I would caution is it's really easy to get on the freight train of change. Fire everybody. They all suck. It's terrible. Let's fire everyone. Well, they don't all suck. And you shouldn't fire everyone at BYU. Because there's a lot of good coaches on the BYU football staff. Mm -hmm. A lot. Was Elisa Tuiaki in over his head? There's no doubt about that. Should Hadley pay for you know the failings of that defensive line and the inability to get to the quarterback, he probably should. Should the lack of production in special teams, the absolute regression of the kicking game, cost Ed Lamb his job? I think it absolutely should. But Jake, I think you need to be careful here and not make change for the sake of change. Yeah, I think making change just to say you made change is a problem, obviously. You know, change for the sake of change is nothing at all, as you just said. And I think that you know, again, as we discussed so often on the show about BYU, like they're not like they're not in the luxurious position of being able to just do whatever the hell they want and win football games. Like I feel like in you know the best teams in the country, like Kirby Smart could take a year off and you're still probably a college football playoff team. You know, like that that's the level of program that they have. And I look at BYU and I say, hey, like you have to make progress you have to get traction you have to make changes that are directly pointed at what you need uh in your program and to me program hey you like that yes. you like that yes and you need to make changes that solve problems like again great tuiaki was not good defensively all right who are you going to bring in who's going to be better than tuiaki this is the same thing i say every single time 
all the Kalani comments come out about, oh, you should fire Kalani and Kalani's not the guy and you should just whack him. And it's like, all right, cool. Who are you going to go and bring in? Because I'm telling you, Bronco's not taking that job. <laughs> like, come on, guy. Jesus. Now, can we get back to something fun? Bro, I don't mean to derail the show. Okay, see, this is next Dude. level. This is next level. Dude. This is what I'm talking about right here. This is what I'm talking about right okay, here. Okay, there are two. I'm and, and when I say home runs, I don't mean fence scrapers. In the competition to win the gift card. Dude. This one right here is a home run. Like this is... This is like 15 rows into the bleachers. Well done, sir. Because what is this that you're looking at? Really well this done. This is M. Alvarez with a picture of Chris Karn. <laughs> Watching Let's the go. show, a picture of Chris <laughs> Karn. Let's go. But not only that, not only did he work in the Chris Karn dish, dish reference, he notes the fake Christmas tree behind him, <laughs> which has been a huge bone of yes, contention. Yes, it has. On this show. Wow. So that's 15 Truly rows into the, that's 15 <laughs> rows into the bleacher. Yes. But dude, this one is upper tank. This one is upper deck because it is <laughs> solace in the shower wearing the t-shirt. Dude, dude, come on. This is sacrificing for the program. Yes. Yes. That's um yes. okay, so who's got the lead? Because again. Now I think this is the best Justin this Solace is, this picture. Is, this, is, this, is the, this is one of the best pictures. So we've done this before on the show. We've been doing the show for however long, years at this point, right? Like seven, eight, nine, however long it's been. Unbelievable. We've done this before. I have yet to see someone go full-on shower mode to win, a, to win something on this show. This is truly incredible. And, and I'm not throwing shade at, at the, the, the Chris Karn Tris, uh, Christmas tree picture at all because that's a phenomenal picture. But this is this is the level of commitment that Justin Solis is 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 willing to put in, you know. Like I I I have to say, like dude, like you're you're raising the bar with that one. I mean, I, I it is inconvenient, right? It's inconvenient to to not only you got up for the show, which she usually does anyway. But it should be said, you're awake for the show. You have a kid. You've probably been up at some point last <laughs> night. You then put on the merch, and then you got in the shower. It's incredible. Like, I, and I'm then you blown, got dude. in the shower. My mind is blown, bro. And I mean, then absolutely incredible. You got in the shower. Yeah. I mean, amazing work, dude. That is that is awesome. So who's got the lead? I don't know. M. Alvarez working in multiple show yeah, references. Multiple show references. I think it's. I don't think we have a leader yet. I think it's very close between uh, Solace, Solace is and, bucking like, though. Yeah, dude. So it, it's the thing is, go to the other one. Go to the go to the Alvarez one. So the thing with this picture, like you were saying, is you have multiple references multiple. going on here. So you've got the Christmas tree and you've got Chris Karn on an iPad or a tablet. Like that's see. So see what I mean. The last hour's winner, Lopez, did this same tactic. And this is really well done. Little details, right? Just like we talk with the Jazz. Note what he's done here in this picture. Just like we talk with right? the Jazz. Little details. So he took a picture of himself listening to the show. Yes. Which means he had to go and get a friend. You go back to the other one with the with the Christmas tree and the iPad. This guy just said, okay, I'm going to work in a couple of show references. I'm going to get a tablet so I can use my smartphone. Like, that's really well but done, dude. man. Dude, Solace is in I the know, shower the, wearing our shirt. The extreme nature of the <laughs> shower is hard to beat, dude. Oh, that's great. Yes, yes, yes. And then, by the way, Boyd Lake. Boyd. With you dude, on the screen in the let's background. Go. With you let's go. on the screen in the background. Unbelievable. You guys are Unbelievable. This, I don't, you know what, man? We're only 16 minutes into this hour, and, and I, don't, I don't know how you do it. Talking BYU football um, here on the Monty Show. Uh, Riley O'Brien says multiple references to the program. Yes, P R O G R U M. Program to the program. Yes, yes. Brocox brother says, "Be proud, guys. What these giveaways prove is that you have a loyal fan base." Amen to that. You guys are amazing. Well, that's why we're doing it. Like, I, you know, we we just we, like you guys tip the show, you provide to the show, and we're telling you, like, I really hope you guys see it. Like. We don't pocket that money. We built this studio out of that money. We're 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 help, we're doing the family help you know helping families during the holidays. We're trying to give back to you guys. Like 
That, I'm telling you, the fun goes back to you guys. Bro, Solace is in the shower, dude. In the in the fact that he did it like <laughs> with his arms over his head, like it's incredible, dude. I just yeah. Oh, he's in the shower. And that means you know what that means though. Oh, that man. means that his significant other is involved in helping yes. him win this. Yes, Brett Robbins says it's not original. Solace is unique. Yeah. Absolutely. Ron Nolan says, "Where are the chick picks?" No, Sheila's listening to the show. Ladies, let's hey. go. Let's hey, go. You know? Solace says, now I have to dry the shirt before work. <laughs> hey, man, the sacrifices we make. Yeah. Right? Uh, M. Alvarez says, sorry, boys, I don't have any merch, so top that. <laughs> you know. But Alvarez, this is... It's a great... You did really well, dude. This is incredible. I Yeah. I think <clears throat> the fake Christmas tree is really good. There's two schools of technique here when you're trying to win something on the show, Right solace the shower pick you're going with the extreme the extreme lane where you know you're 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 like all right i have merch that gives me a distinct advantage over other people because we haven't released merch in a while and i'm going to jump in the shower and i'm just going to launch that thing i'm going to wreck my day yes. or at least 20 minutes because now i got to dry off yes now i probably got to do some laundry that's right T. like you're sacrificing for the show yeah but then they have the dish so reference. Is, the tree see, reference is amazing. This is the other school of thought. Hey, I'm not going to, I don't have time to wreck my show. Notice he's got his button up on and he's ready to go for work. He's ready to go. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to make multiple references. Very smart work here, man. Very smart. I'm telling you, it's one in one A right now. Uh, Brett uh, Robin says Alvarez is number one for third hour. Okay. Well, we got, what so, about the so second saying, hour? So you're saying, so no, but that inherently means that solid, he's saying Solace is the winner for, number, for hour number two. Okay. So far, that's okay. what he's saying there. Well, keep them coming, yeah. folks. Keep them coming. <laughs> Built Ford Tough is back, oh, here, baby. Look at that. And it is a Ford. It is. I was, ex <laughs> how did I get that right? How did I get that yes. right? Yes. That is so lucky. That uh, 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 you're a stud. That's Steve hilarious. Dude. That's unbelievable. Let me let me put that picture yeah, up just real quick. For the, just for the sake of it, that's we hilarious. Do, we dude. do. We did not intention. We did not mean for this to completely derail the show. Well, that's what happens. But Steve Lopez just dropped uh, on Twitter. There's the truck right there. There is the truck right that's there. That's absolutely a Ford. Built Ford Tough is darn right. Well done, sir. Way well to work hard, you, dude. man. Appreciate well you, done. dude. Congratulate. That's our winner from hour number one. By the way, there was just something about this picture that, I mean, there's just something about that yeah, picture. It's just, got, it's just got the vibe, dude. You remember the Ford commercials? I think it was Ford. Probably was Chevy. I remember the Ford commercials where they had like the guys with their stone faces and the miners with the... Yeah. That's what this... The motif won you that. Yes. Absolutely the motif won you that. Uh, let's see. Salty Drunk says, I picked a bad night to run out of 4X in the fridge, damn it. <laughs> yeah, you did. Hey, well, listen, listen. You've got, you've still got 90 minutes. Run you, to the you, store, yeah, dude. go to the store, dude. Don't get picked off by like a Rue down there or anything, you know. Yeah. You know. Uh, talking BYU football on the Monty Show presented by our good friends at Barbecue Pit Stop. BBQ Pit Stop always presents football talk here on the Monty Show. BBQPitStop.com. You guys have been amazing at supporting all of our guys at Barbecue Pit Stop. We love that you guys speaking and tweeting us photos. We love that you guys tweet us photos of Asado seasoning, and that that just means so much for our small business owners who support this show, and all of the owners at the Barbecue Pit Stops, whether it's Layton, Logan, uh, Lehigh, St. George, Murray, um, all five Utah stores. And again, it's been awesome to see all of our listeners around the country shopping online uh, at Barbecue Pit Stop, bbqpitstop.com. You can shop online. They'll ship right to you. Um, you know, our, our guy, uh, San Diego state asked me the other day about that. By the way, he also submitted a picture. Where's my guy? Oh, Aztec? Yeah. Where, where's, buddy? yeah, where's my guy asked, where's buddy? <laughs> where's buddy? <laughs> there's buddy right there. What's up, dude? There's, there's buddy What's right up? there. Good to see you Aztec as always. Snapdragon. Uh, that's right. But, um, you know, we love to see that you guys support our, our sponsors at barbecue pit stop. Because they're really just good guys. And again, we really try to do business with small business owners, guys that are entrepreneurs who are like-minded like we are. And there's no better example of that than the guys at Barbecue Pit Stop in this holiday season, whether it's for yourself, for your husband, for your mom, for your dad, for your son, for your daughter, shop local. Shop at Barbecue Pit Stop. BBQPitStop.com. You already know that they have 
the best equipment. So Traeger, Yoder, Big Green Egg, Camp Chef, they've got all the best equipment. You want an outdoor pizza oven? BBQPitStop.com. Facts. You want pellets? Hey, BBQPitStop.com. Facts. You want cherry pellets, pecan pellets, oak, you name it, they've got it. Competition blend, barbecue pit stop. But what they have that's so much better than everybody else is, they've got the spices, the seasonings, the blends, the wing dust. Don't go to Harmon's or Albertson's or your local grocery store to buy seasoning for those wings. You can't do that, you rookie. Go to bbqpitstop.com or any of their five Utah locations, Logan, Layton, uh, St. George, Lehigh, and Murray. Get in there. They'll let you flavor sample things. They'll tell you, hey, what are you making? Well, you know, I'm doing a brisket and I don't have seasoning. Or, hey, do I really need to let that, that brisket rest? Do I need to wrap it and put it in a cooler? Well, yeah, you do, and here's why. Hey, do I need to season the wings and let them sit there with the seasoning on them before I put them on the grill? Yeah, you do, and here's why. And he will every single time. You're you're buying into the knowledge of those guys because they are the best at smoking, barbecue, you name it. They're the best in the business at it. You have questions? You don't want to buy anything? You just want to know how to make those wings? BBQPitStop.com. They have a great chat feature on their website that you can use at bbqpitstop, bbqpitstop.com. Uh, Boyd Lake says, what's next for the BYU coaching staff? Jeez, I, isn't I that think, the million-dollar question? You know, again, I think the, what's next is a lot of change. And I just, I just hope that it is thoughtful, pragmatic, difference-making change. Defensively, this team has been underperforming for years which was a surprising to a lot of us because when Kalani got that job, I think we all thought this was going to be an elite defensive unit. Just like Kyle Whittingham is. And it hasn't been. It has not been. And I think a lot of it is injuries. You've had so many injuries across that defensive line. Um, you've had so many injuries to key contributors in the linebacking core this year. You have not been able to pressure the quarterback. You have not been able to cover the underneath routes. You have not been able to certainly stop the run. There has to be significant change on the defense and the special teams. I am just hoping, I am just, in my opinion, saying, I don't believe you should change a single coach on offense. <laughs> I, I would not change a single coach. And if you, if you look at a guy like a Steve Clark, because he's the tight ends coach, the tight ends were underused and underperformed. And you lost one to Utah, probably. Probably but we won't say that guy's name anymore. I think that that's a guy you could make a change with. Yeah. Harvey Yunga is your running back coach. I don't know why you would make a change unless there's a personality conflict. And the next time I talk to my guys at BYU, I'm going to ask about that because it doesn't make a lot of sense. I think the running backs have been solid at BYU. Not spectacular, certainly with this year's crop, but Lopini Katoa has clearly grown during his time with Harvey Yunga. Now, is that Lopini? Is that Harvey? I don't know. But I think you've clearly seen growth in the running back game. I'm advocating to keep Harvey Unga. And I know that a lot of people will disagree with me on that, but I'm telling you, change for the sake of change is not the right change to make. Yeah, You're not going to you know, hire a new running back coach or elevate a running back coach and get a much better performance. I don't see that happening. If Harvey's not recruiting to the level you need him to recruit to, okay, we can have that conversation. But what he's had to work with, the performance on the field, I don't know how you look at Harvey Yunga and say, hey, man, Tyler Algier just was not good enough. H how do you say that? Pini Katoa's growth and, and development as a, a running back at BYU, just not good enough, Harvey. We're going to have to let you go. I just I don't see that. Yeah, I I, I look. I, I think the offense is obviously in a better situation than the defense was, but I think the thing that we also have to consider is that, you know, Jaron's leaving, right? Like you're not going to have a Jaron Hall know. level quarterback. I, I I think he is. I I would be, I would be disappointed for Jaron Hall. Notice I didn't say disappointed in Jaron Hall, but disappointed for Jaron Hall if he didn't go to the league because I think he needs to. I would to. agree with that. I think, he need, I think this is his window. He's got momentum. I think you need to go to the league. But here nor there, let's just assume that Jaron goes to the league, right? The problem for me is what stands out is 
you were very average offensively at times, even with Jaron, even with Christopher Brooks, who let a lot of people down, even with Peeney back there. So to me, I'm not sitting here saying that 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 Aaron Roderick and company are are you know did nearly as bad of a job as Elisa Tuiaki and company. But what I am here to say is that let's say Conover steps into the starting role. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, to be honest with you. But let's just say for argument's sake, he does. Okay, now you have a little bit of an inexperienced guy there, a younger guy at the position. That demands more. You don't have Jaron's leadership on the field. You don't have that calming presence. So that's what I'm saying. I think as a program, if I'm Kalani, I'm looking at everything across the board. I'm saying, okay, Yep, defense had some trouble, but I know offense had some shortcomings as well in a better spot there, but still some shortcomings. Where can we improve across the board? That's what I think you have to do. Special teams, I don't think you need to worry about special teams. I think you were fine there. Honestly, Jake Oldroyd missing all those kicks is not on a coach. I got news for you, right? A pitcher not being able to throw a strike, not on a coach. I don't know about that. I I don't think it is, dude. I don't think it is. I think when I look at Jake the make... We need to stop calling him that. I'm yeah, done with you know, that name. You know what it is? Jake, the make changes in the special teams. Because you, you can't I, – I look at – I was looking at some of the numbers, and it, it is not – you can't put this level of failure in special teams on the kicker. I, I, I just but, don't – But what do you mean this level of failure? It's a make or miss position. Like – it, it, it's it's a lot more than that. It is how you're blocking. It is the snapping. It's the long snapper. It's the holder. It's the kicker. Um, it is the execution on kickoffs, punt coverage. It is flipping the field. It is the ability to leverage your punter. You know, like it, it is the ability not to kick the ball out of bounds on the kickoff stupidly. To me, you 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 know that Jake Oldroyd is a hell of a kicker. I have no doubt about that. I've seen enough to know he should be an elite college football kicker playing on Sunday, and he's not going to right now. And I just can't believe that a kid falls off a cliff that far and you can't point yourself at the special teams coach and say, what are we doing? (coughs) What is this kid doing? What's the issue? And I know all these kickers and punters have very different modus operandi, how they do business, they have specific coaches. They have coaches on in their personal lives. Like what they do away from the game a lot of times impacts what they do during the game. But I'm sorry. Safety play and special teams were issues. That's Ed Lamb. And he's the assistant head coach. You're essentially saying, hey, that's my number two. He hasn't been good enough. It hasn't been good enough. I would agree with that. I'm not saying that all the special team and, issues are on. And on, the kick coverage was awful. Yeah, I'm not saying that Jake Oldroyd is responsible for all special teams. What I am saying is that Ed Lamb is not responsible for Jake Oldroyd not being able to make kicks. I I just will die on that hill. Like, throwing a strike, making kicks, like, you know what you need to do to be Jake the make, right? And you're doing your damnedest you do. to do it, and you're not making kicks. Like, I'm sorry. That's not... Nobody else is in control of him making or missing kicks. Now, you want to talk about... um you know, lack of coverage on special teams. You want to talk about team-oriented special team stuff? Yeah, that's on Ed Lamb. That's on the coaching staff. Just like just like anything else in football, right? Like that that's a team thing. That's a coaching thing. Totally down with that. But but your 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 point about, you know, old droid kicking it out of bounds on the kickoff or missing kicks, like that that's not uh, like you can tell the guy, hey, you're gonna do this drill to work on your game this week. But ultimately, the snap was fine. Hold was fine. He missed the kick. Like, in, on the kickoff, there is no I, snap. I think there is some truth in that. There is some truth in that. My problem is a lot of this is not physical, especially in the kicking game. Yeah. A lot of it is mental preparation. <laughs> and, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, we can agree to disagree as we talk about BYU – Uh, Making changes on the football coaching staff. Certainly one of the biggest stories in sports this morning in Utah presented by Quick Quack Car Wash. Hey man, it's no secret. It's snowing outside. There's salt on the road. Do not let that salt destroy your paint. Do not let that salt damage your car. Get to Quick Quack Car Wash and get a free car wash. Their grand openings are going on right now. I can only again tell you, get to South Jordan at the district. The Quick Quack Car Wash right next to... Um, there's a 7-Eleven there. There's a Grease Monkey there. 
there's a quick quack car wash there. And it's amazing. The people are friendly. It's brand new technology. Bring your kids too, because the tunnel where you drive through to get your car wash has all these cool lights, different colored soaps. Like it, it's really, and I know it sounds crazy to go to the car wash and say, hey, it was fun. It's fun to go through there. And the best part is the vacuums are free. The towels, they give you free towels to wipe your car down. Wipe your, they give you a free dashboard wipe. Like that's all free at Quick Quack Car Wash. And I would highly encourage you, get the wash pass. It's $21.99 a month is what I pay. And it gets me their best wash. And I can go one time a month or a thousand times a month. It's totally up to me. So when it snows three out of four days and I need two car washes in five days, I don't pay any more for that right? That's why I get a wash pass at Quick Quack Car Wash. Tell me you heard about it on the Monty Show. Let's get some of your thoughts in here on BYU. Um, Mark Rasmussen says, the best gift to give is the gift of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Sorry if you're offended by that. Amen to that. Uh, Kicking a kickoff out of bounds is so much. It's so frustrating. It's a mental mistake. It is a mental mistake. No doubt about that. Um, you know, I just, I think, well, and you know what? I think Tulin makes a really good point. Jake uh, would have improved if they had a good coach. Mm. I think there are certain tactics that you can take with kickers. And I am not a big believer in having a kicker watch film repeatedly. Yeah. I'm not. But you have got to be able to say, okay, this is the issue diagnose is it truly the holder we've heard a lot about bad snaps and execution on the offensive line during special teams the other thing that I think is is always a problem is assignments on special teams how many times did Isaac Rex run into the game late on on field goal Mm -hmm. like there's just a a total package problem in special teams and you got to make that change in my opinion absolutely have to uh, Boyd Lake says kicking short to the best returners in D1. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tulin said he, Jake got worse. He did. Uh, Arlington Bear says BYU coverage on kicks was terrible. It and, and was. That's what I'm saying. Like the coverage stuff is, is a coaching issue for sure. Like it is. But I, I guess where I differ is that I don't, I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, kind of like what you were saying, like, like kickers don't need to go and watch a bunch of film the way a safety does. Correct. That's just not, that, that's not what they need to do what kickers need to do is work on their mechanics that's what they need to do and i feel like largely jake's mechanics are pretty damn good the problem is is that he's just missing and and that's what i'm saying that's one of it's like it's like when steph curry goes O of 30. You, what do you say he's the best shooter the game's ever seen he's gonna miss with jake the problem is is he's not good enough to justify that right now like yeah you made some kicks in your college career but it's not like you're the best kicker the game's ever seen. So that's what I'm saying. Like there has to be, it's one of two things. Like either Jake is, is just has the yips and is in his head and can't do it anymore. Or the coaching really was that crappy and he got no feedback and couldn't figure it out. Yeah. Like it's one of two things. Yep. Totally agree. And I, I think, you know, one of the things that's so clear to me is that change is needed at BYU. Absolutely. By the way, it is seven 35. You've got about 25 minutes to, uh, Tweet your pictures in. Um, and I got to give a big shout out. I've got to give a big shout out to the Nye guy who doesn't use Twitter and tweeted us a picture, but somehow I saved it wrong. Um, Nye guy, you're absolutely in. No doubt about it. But you want to talk about show references. And I think we all know <laughs> that one of the best guys on the show, without a doubt, here on the National Day of Giving, yeah, which is why we are giving you a $100 Amazon gift card every hour on the show. Steven Lopez won it in hour one. Yep. One of the best guys ever on this show is Fat Jesus. Wow. To send us the bird at our old crappy radio station (laughs) in Phoenix. (laughs) My guy. The First of all, the longtime listener vibes on this picture are remarkable truly incredible not only is it the crappy radio station in phoenix not only is it the bird but he truly understands the the absolute damage that we dealt with at that radio station yes, like he does. that doesn't make you feel responsible but then there's talking with Raphael podcast dude what's up my guy what is going on look at this picture 
This is Raphael with his new baby with the show on the crib in the background. Does he get points for how close to the edge his computer is? No, he gets points for the fact that he's got a pacifier in his mouth. <laughs> Not in the baby's mouth. Raphael, that's amazing. Incredible. Really that's well am- done. And it's a big day for Raphael because he is a huge football fan. That's pretty much self-explanatory. We have got to carve out a notch for Iran versus U.S. talk today. Yeah. But that picture is amazing. Really well done. Really well done. So, again, I just say. So, who? Okay, so let's go over the leaderboard here. So, I, I, you got it. he's tied for the lead, dude. M. Alvarez has to be there, right? Yeah. Justin Solis has to be has there. Has to be. I mean, that's just next level commitment. But is it Raphael? Is it Fat Jesus? I it's it, the I don't. Th- I it's Raphael because I don't. I like Fat Jesus. I love that picture, dude. I appreciate what what the you did there. The sentiment of it. Yeah, I really appreciate the sentiment of that, a hundred percent. But I have to say again, just the same way I did with Solis, I have to say. Baby's in the picture. This is a high-level commitment right here. Raphael. Oh, oh. We have time. I mean, you don't have to choose the an on, outright the leader yet. The entendre of. Yeah, this is this isn't this is a this is like Kevin Durant's performance. This is masterful. A work okay, of art. So I'm going off script and saying, Solace, I'm going to send you a hundred dollar Amazon gift card. I think that the what you did here, getting in the shower wearing a t-shirt. Okay. Okay. We're going to send you a gift card. Okay. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. But that's, you're not, that's not the winner for the hour. I'm just doing it because the Solace game this morning it's been is... been strong, dude. It's been strong. The, the, we have a lot of pictures in here. Solace with the baby transitioning and upping his game to Solace in the shower. Incredible. Encompassing somebody else's help while wearing the casual shirt. Yes. That's an auto bid. Yes. That, but right now, the question is... Okay, so you're saying that Salas is out of the running to win the hour because you're just going to send him uh, We're just going to do it. Yeah, okay. All right. But this guy right here, M. Alvarez versus Rafael. Yeah. Now, sentimentally, Rafael's got the baby. He's got the crib. He's but got all due respect. the crib at the crib. Yeah. Watching the show. Yeah. And he's got a pacifier in his mouth. So well done. See, now, just, that's little, the little details there are what's putting it over the top. I mean, you know. But so, again, the Alvarez picture is just so deep with references. With the fake tree, Chris Karn doing dishes. I'm, come on, man. Wait, 20 really minutes. Well done. 20 minutes. Clock's 20 ticking. minutes. We're giving away a $100 Amazon gift card once an hour, apparently twice an hour, because I said so. Um, you know, all you have to do is tweet us at The Monty Show, M O N T Y, The Monty Show on Twitter and we will continue to we will continue to re- retweet it, it's amazing oh it boy. is amazing Derek Francis oh boy what do we got here with the with the jazz t-shirt the outlets at anthem okay and he's got the yellow or sweatshirt rather he's got the yellow jazz okay let's save this <coughs> pic- let's save this picture <coughs> um because you know so we go to the game last night right yes we walk in mhm first thing i have to do obviously yeah is going to the team store you literally he literally says to me well first thing i gotta see him he doesn't say i gotta go look at the jerseys he just i gotta see him yeah i gotta see him that's right t so they're unimpressive in person yeah they're they're not the yellow is my favorite now i'm just being honest with you so Derek francis rocking the yellow this morning yeah at the anthem outlets there's some respect for that well done really there's some respect for that appreciate you man absolutely amazing well done well done. You've got uh, 19 minutes. Football 50 coming up in 10 minutes. Um, but I want to finish up on this BYU conversation because I think it's a big deal. I think you don't hopefully make changes like this a lot. And I say that to make the point that Kalani Sataki is in a really important time in his career as a head football coach. Because you're going to make all these changes And if you have the same season next year you had this year, I think you have to start looking at different changes. Yeah. And I think you have to start looking much more closely at Kalani because I don't think his seat is hot right now. I really don't. If you have a a terrible year last next year, and I think success next year going into the Big 12 is bull eligibility. You got to win six games. 
If you don't make a bowl next year, I think you got to start looking. Yep. I know it's difficult. I know it's a huge transition. And maybe the way they lose those games, okay, we'll talk about it. But I'm not asking for 10 wins next year. I'm asking you to win six games. And the six games you're not going to win, I'm asking you not to get torched. I'm asking no, no, you not, no. I'm asking you not to lose by three because you missed three kicks. Yeah. You didn't cover kicks. You had five guys out to injury. You know, and, you know, like, you just, Max Tooley's out again. Or this guy's out again. Or Kingsley's out again. Like, yeah. that's what cannot happen. That's what cannot happen. Totally agree. And I think you don't, and I'm trying to be measured because when you're talking about a guy's job, you don't do the job that Kalani Sataki did at BYU and just don't consider the the gravity of it. I mean, you're 98 and 56 as an independent. A lot of that is thanks to Kalani Sataki. Yep. You know, yep. like it, it is. It's true. I mean, he's done amazing things at, at BYU. And I think that, you know, I, again, it, it, sports is a what have you done for me lately, lately business. It yeah. just is. And I think that that whether we're talking about Will Hardy, Kalani Sataki, Kyle Whittingham, you know, you, you, you look around the landscape and you start to understand, okay, great. Cool. You guys went to the Rose Bowl last year. What are we doing this year? Oh, that's right. We're trying yes. to go to the Rose Bowl again, right? Like you look at Kalani, and I think there are a lot more factors that Kalani has to deal with. Not that those are excuses, but They're it's not. just true. They're not. And I think that there is a lot of success on the horizon for BYU and Kalani, but I think there's going to be a pain train in the first season in the Big 12. And yeah. I think it's just a matter of how, how, Substantial is that ass kicking? Can you be bowl eligible or not? Because that's what it is. Substantial is yeah. that ass be kicking? Because the Big Twelve is a strong physical league. Like I know BYU historically speaking plays a good schedule every year. They do. They like Tom Homo does a great job scheduling. You get a ton of P five talent on the schedule. You've beaten every Pac twelve team now. Great, awesome, right? But the difference is when you're playing the Big Twelve every single week. You right now, your strength and conditioning program is garbage. You have too many injuries, too many guys that can't stay on the field. You think that it's going to get easy for you in the Big 12? No. You got another thing coming, and that's what I'm worried about. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, that's it'll what I'm be worried interesting about. to see what happens. It, it really will. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. Damn. I just choked on myself. Uh, Boyd Lake says kicking slumps are like shooting slumps. Got to keep shooting and keep kicking. It's counterintuitive. Absolutely. Great. Absolutely, it is. It is. I mean, it, it it's important. Justin Saul says, "Let's go, boys! Congratulations!" Yeah, you got to. By the way, you got to DM us. We need to get like your information. And stuff. Yeah, it, it, yeah, absolutely. Justin, DM me. Uh, Tulin says, "Really, I expect four, maybe five wins. We're going to see a huge offensive overhaul on the player side." Yeah, I, I wonder if I'm Jaron Hall. That's one of the reasons I'm out. I mean, he hasn't said he's out, but. I mean, I, I have to think you're going to lose Puka. You're going to lose Jaron. You're going to lose multiple starters on the offensive line. Uh, Harrison Chance will join us tomorrow on the show, by the way. We'll talk about that. Um, but I, I think it's, it's very difficult to take such a big step up. The Big 12 is a – I mean, you have a college football playoff team in that league. Um, you know, you look at what Kansas has done. Again, I just point to Kansas, Kansas State, TCU. Keep it the, real. The surprises that we've seen come forward out yes. of that league yes. are, are really incredible. And I think the thing that really stands out to me is that BYU is going in with Cincinnati, Central Florida, Houston. You're walking into an absolute, you know, fire. Like, it, it is going to be very difficult. Well, and I think that's what's required to bring an entire uh, it is. school up, you know, to the next rung on the ladder as far as like college football and the big picture is concerned. But, but I, at the same time, I think that, that we've been, we, or the BYU fan base has been waiting for this moment in the, the, the program's history to happen, right? Like you've been waiting for, Hey, we're finally going to join a conference again. We're finally going to, you, we're going to take that leap and we're going to join a P5 after the Pac-12 told us to go F ourselves, after everybody said... The, after into, the Pac-12 yeah. told us That's to what they F did. Ourselves. Did they not? They did. They did. They told you to go F they yourself. Did. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They yep. said you weren't good enough. Yep. Uh, Tulin says, I think Cody Epps is a toss-up to tran for transfer portal as well as stock shot up. I don't think he'll transfer. I think he knows 
If he comes back, he's the number one receiver on a pass-heavy team. Who's playing quarterback? Yeah, well, I think that's a big deal. I think transfer portal business at BYU has to pick up significantly. Does that happen? I don't know. I mean, they've you know, Christopher Brooks is a great example of that. I mean, you have to, you have to go in and you, you got to make a decision on Jacob, Jacob Conover. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't know if you know who he is yet. Yeah, I guess I'll have to figure something out because you don't trust him certainly to throw the football. Uh, Jeremy Bolton says just tweeted you a picture of Caruso getting arrested. So typical. Well, <coughs> there you go. There's the picture of Caruso getting arrested. <laughs> Now, here's the thing about this picture, and this is a strong contender to win the hour. Number one, it's Caruso. Right. Which is a huge thing on this show. <laughs> number two, the show's on in the background. Yeah. And number three, it's it's Jeremy Bolton. Yeah. An all-timer, a Hall of Fame. An absolute juggernaut on the show. The mayor of Montytown. Yes. Um, so, I mean, th this is a strong contender. Absolutely. And is. with... 12 minutes to go here. Yeah, still time. Still got plenty of time. I mean, it's. It, I think Jeremy Bolton may be in the lead. Don't panic. Run your offense. You you, know. Yeah, don't panic. Exactly right. right. Run panic. your offense. Don't play hero ball, Donnie. Run your offense. Like, let's go. Run your offense. Let's try and... There we go. Okay, so there's the photo. Yeah. Raphael. Yep. And then this one with Alvarez, dude. Oh, man, dude. It's tough. You guys are doing a really good job. And again, if you're just tuning in, we're giving away $100 gift cards to Amazon every hour on the show today. Yeah. We've given away two just because Justin Salas went so far and above yeah. with his effort today. Yeah. That it's awfully difficult. I mean, his first entry was, was amazing. Yeah. His first entry was baby wearing a, a casual shirt like... Okay, but his second entry was, okay, if that's not good enough, let me get in the shower with the casual shirt on. <laughs> Excellent strategy, sir. I mean, it's everything that you want. Yeah. So he just got an auto bid to the, the Amazon gift card. Yeah. Our first hour winner was, was Steven Lopez built Ford Tough. Okay, like... Just a great picture. Just a great picture. It's everything that you want. Um, the guy is out kicking ass in the world, working hard, and it just so happens... He actually drives a Ford pickup truck. <laughs> so that's, you you're know, welcome. but you're getting all everybody in. You're getting everybody in. Right now, I do think Jeremy Bolton shot up the, the leaderboard. Yes. Yes. But I, I think if I'm leaning, I'm still right here because it's Raphael with the, the, the show on the crib at the crib yeah. while he has a binky in his mouth. Yeah, the binky is what is what puts you into the top. The here. binky puts it over the top, but yeah. the Caruso arrest is so you know good. You what I like about this picture, too? Not even that the show's on in the background, right? Because that's a prerequisite. You got to have the show on, right? The lean. Yeah. This is like you're getting arrested on a cop car and you've got the lean going on. That's what I love about it. But Bolton's a little too comfortable getting cuffed. Yeah. So is this cosplay for you? Like, what are we talking about here, Bolton? No, you know. I guess not. It's amazing. So I think it's close. With, yeah. I'm, I'm going. I, I, I like Alvarez's a lot. Tom says, I want that shirt. New shirts are coming. Um, Riley O'Brien says, a staple of the program is Jeremy Bolton. Yeah, Absolutely. I, I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, Ron Nolan says uh, he's in the shower because his baby puked on his shirt. <laughs> Probably. Uh, Jeremy says, it's because I've practiced hiding my stash for years. Well, you know, you know, <laughs> like, come on. You got to love it. You got to love it. Greg Hawkins is in. Greg. Another Hall of okay, Famer. See, What's now up? We got some, now we got some heavy hitters coming into the show. So, again, football at 50 and 60 seconds. But having said that, again, I just want to explain. We're giving away $100 Amazon gift cards every hour on the show today. All you have to do is tweet us a picture of yourself. But I'm warning you now that the competition is stiff. And <laughs> see now, see, look what Raphael's doing. Look what my guy's doing now. He's playing on the heartstrings now. I love this. He is. I and love he's, this. And, and this is this is his, you know, this is his stand. He, he's like, I, it's not good enough that yeah. I had the crib at the crib. Yeah, and the binking in and you know. It's not good enough. Yeah. Now what Raphael has done is he has added the baby is watching the show. It's all part of the plan. With the binky in. So now yes, we're getting generational yes, binky usage yeah. and also converting babies into Monty show fans. Hey, look at me. So, I mean, 
when we're building generational listenership, it's hard to ignore that. But again, Caruso, the pot smoker, getting arrested at the supposed airport while watching the show. By the way, I yelled at Caruso last night from my third row seat, and he looked over at me, and I felt it. Mo- I, I felt it move. Well, it moved a little. So, <laughs> you know, you know. I mean, any time that you yell at Alex Caruso and he turns and you lock eyes. <laughs> I was more open for dilly dilly, but oh, any, dilly dilly, dilly dilly. Any time that Caruso looks you in the face, dilly dilly. Oh dilly. my God, what are we even talking about here? But the Caruso arrest photo is pretty strong. Yeah, pretty yeah. strong. It is. So Rec One still wants to know where is the Tanner picture? Yeah, I mean, how is it that Tanner misses the days every single time he misses? I don't know how he chooses his days. Guys, you can't miss the show. You have to watch the show every show. You do. I mean, because you just, when you, you when you take shows off, this is the consequences of taking shows off. I'm gonna get medieval on your ass. You can't do it. And Tanner, you know. This is karma. We had a bot in there. By the way, can I just say we don't use Telegraph or Telegram or. We don't use any messaging. We're never going to DM you anywhere. Oh, my this, God. Just like that. Oh. Somebody was like, oh, hey, do I send, do, do you message me on Telegram. You won. We don't use Telegram. Yeah. We, you know how Come to on. get in touch with us. Come on. Are you kidding me? Uh, I don't know where Tanner is. Uh, Jeremy Bolton says, of course, Caruso looked at you. He's not paying attention to the game. Dude, he was pretty good last night. He was, actually. 